All right, guys, so let's talk about parallel compression, side chain compression, and ducking. All right, so I have this session open as an example. It's kind of a huge session, so hopefully uh, my new computer can actually handle this here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you this on the drums here. So I'm going to solo these drums. And what I have here is I have parallel compression on the drums. So we'll talk about it a little bit, then I'll show you um, what this sounds like. So basically parallel compression is just a form of parallel processing, just the same way uh, sidechain compression is a form of sidechain processing. So when we say parallel compression or sidechain compression, those are just forms of those processing types that are using compression specifically, right? So they're like a more specific form of a broader range of uh, processing that you can do. So parallel compression, it's sometimes also called New York compression. So you might have heard that term too. Um, but basically parallel compression, what it's doing is you have like a dry or a normal version of a signal. So in my example, I have, these are my room mics for my drums and then these are the close mics for the drums. So I have, this is like my normal or my like dry signal. And so you'll notice it does have some compression on it, but it's not extreme compression. It's just like a standard or a light compression on that actual aux track. So so that's like my dry or my normal version. And then in parallel processing, we also have another aux track or, you know, another uh, signal flow um, iteration. So this is pretty normal, but what makes it parallel processing is that I have another iteration of this signal flow going to another aux track. And so what makes it parallel compression here is that generally it's going to be a super um, strongly compressed signal, so like a really extreme compression that's then mixed in with this uh, normal or dry track, right? So they're parallel because even though I have two different aux tracks here and they're both receiving very different treatment in terms of what processing is on them, they're parallel because they're both receiving the same signal. So they're both receiving these close mics on my drums. And then it's compression because this parallel signal here, the second aux track here, is actually running a compressor and that's kind of the main feature of this thing, right? So, so usually when people talk about parallel compression or like New York compression, it's going to be a super, super compressed version of the signal that's on that parallel track. Geez, sorry, my voice is going. Um, so I'll show you what that means here. So what I like to do um, is really crunch the compression. So this is a pretty low threshold here. Um, it's a pretty extreme ratio. See how it kind of flattens out here. It's not like at an angle, it's a pretty extreme ratio. So it's really bringing down um, all those loud parts, really crunching them down. So they're almost at the same um, dynamic range. There's less of dynamic range here, right? And then I also have a second compressor on here as well. So I'm really compressing the signal. I'm really squishing it. And so what happens is a lot of times when we over compress things, we kind of lose some of the transients or we lose um, some of the bite of the, of the drums of whatever the instrument is, and they don't pop out in the mix as much. So what we then do is we take this signal that isn't over compressed and we mix it in with the version that is over compressed. Because what we want to hear is we want to hear that initial attack, those initial transients. So that's why we have this one to help it pop out in the mix a little bit more. And then we mix in this one, so that like parallel track, the parallel compression, we mix that in to add some of those like otherwise quieter and more subtle definition. Um, I don't know if definition is the right word, but um, it, it brings up those quieter things so that the, the drums or whatever the instrument is feels a lot more present in your mix. And I'll show you what that means here in a second. Actually, I'll just do it now. So let me put on my headphones. I'm just gonna play a section for you here. Um, I don't know what the best section to show you is, maybe this part. So I just have the drums soloed here. I'm gonna play them and I'm gonna bring down the parallel compression and then I'm gonna bring it back up just with the fader so you can hear um, how that affects the actual sound. So you hear how you hear more of those those higher frequencies really and more of that um, the details in the actual drums. So it just helps those drums be a little more present in your mix. 
So that's parallel compression and parallel processing, right? So you can run parallel processing with any other type of processing, right? It doesn't have to be compression. You could, in theory, do parallel reverbs, parallel delays, anything like that. It's basically all it means is that you're sending the same signal to two different places for different processing, and then you're blending them together. Okay, so now let's talk about sidechain compression. So I was gonna do this as two separate videos, but I think I'll just do it as one video. Um, I have had questions from people like figuring out what the difference is between parallel compression and sidechain compression. Um, so I figured it would be good to put these both together in the same video so we can really see the differences here and talk about the differences. So Sidechain compression is kind of similar in some ways, but um, there are some very big differences. So basically what we're doing whenever we're doing any form of sidechain processing is we are taking audio from one track, so let's say this track, and we're sending it out through usually a bus, right? And we're sending it to a plugin that's then on another track. So if this is track A, then this one would be track B and it would have an actual plugin on it that's receiving the audio from track A. And so what that means is that the audio on track A, this one, is actually controlling the processing or triggering the processing on track B. So a lot of times we do that with compression, so we then call it sidechain compression instead of just sidechain processing. And again, you can do sidechain processing with things other than compression. Compression is just one of the very common ways that we tend to use it. So there are actually some examples of sidechain compression that the average person might be familiar with, right? So, so if you've ever been listening to the radio and you've noticed that towards the end of the song, the DJ will kick in and start talking uh, before the actual song is complete, then you've probably heard a version of sidechain compression. So basically what's happening there is that towards the end of the song, when the DJ kicks in, his track would be like track A here. And so that audio is then triggering a compressor or some type of process that's bringing the volume down on the music so that you can hear the DJ a little bit better. So he's a little bit more audible and he's over that level of the music. So basically um, you'll notice the music gets a little bit quieter when the DJ kicks in and they start talking. That's an example of sidechain compression. And that's actually also an example of ducking. So ducking is when we use techniques like this. So techniques like sidechain compression to actually reduce the level on a track based on the signal from another track, right? So in this example, it'd be you reduce in the level in the music based on when the DJ audio kicks in. So a lot of the times when we use sidechain compression, we are reducing the levels on whatever we're calling track B, right? Um, and that's an example of ducking. So you could either say sidechain compression or you could say ducking. Um, ducking is just a little bit more specific than saying sidechain compression or sidechain processing, but they're all kind of in the same family of term, right? So you have the broader version, sidechain processing. That's when um, audio from track A affects processing on track B. You have sidechain compression, right? Which is where uh, audio on track A affects the compression on track B, right? And then you have ducking, which is where the audio on track A is affecting the processing on track B in a way that causes a reduction of level specifically. All right, and so some common ways that we tend to use sidechain compression in the audio world are, for example, in music, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll have it so whenever the kick drum kicks in, the bass is then like the track B that's being reduced or compressed. And so it reduces the level of the bass for the brief initial hit of the kick drum. And that just helps the kick drum pop out a little bit more. So that's one common way that we use it. Another way, for example, in film, is a lot of times we will have sidechain compression or some form of ducking to slightly reduce uh, like sound effects or music whenever there's dialogue over it. So that helps the dialogue be a little bit more intelligible and pop out a little bit more in the mix. It's pretty subtle because we don't want it to be like super obvious that those uh, sound effects or that music's jumping around, but it does help a little bit with making those things pop out. All right, so I'm gonna show you really briefly how to do sidechain compression. And for my Patreon patrons, I will have this information in a handout form um, posted to Patreon for you. So you don't have to rewatch this video. You can just look at a little checklist to do this stuff if you uh, forget how to do it. So, so I guess I'm gonna use the kick and the bass as an example here. And I'm just gonna kind of like rebuild this here for you so you can see how it actually works. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a send and I'm gonna use a bus that's not being used. So I'll just use 6566. I wanna bring this up to zero. 
Um, and then I might want to make this pre-fader. I probably would make it pre-fader for something like, like this. So that basically just means that it's sending the signal level uh, before the actual fader. So it's sending the same signal level no matter what I do with the fader. So if I want to hear less of the kick, I can reduce the fader and not have to worry about how that's affecting the signal that's being sent to my compressor for my sidechain compression. So I probably would do pre-fader here. I can just close that. So that's the first step. So now I know that my kick signal is being sent out through bus 6566. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a compressor onto my bass track here. So this is where all my bass tracks are filtering in. And um, I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna do the one that comes stock with Pro Tools. So no matter what uh, suite of plugins you have, um, you are gonna at least have this plugin, right? So hopefully this is a little more accessible to more people but I'm gonna pick the Dyn3 compressor limiter that comes with Pro Tools. So basically, I already have my signal going out um, from my kick, 6566, and so what I gotta do is right now, the way that um, any plugin opens up on any track is it's going to be listening to and processing the audio on that track. So that's not what we want. We want it to listen to the kick, right? Because we want it to just reduce that bass slightly whenever the kick has its initial hit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go where it says sidechain here. I just wanna uh, click here on the little key input button. And so that enables the key input. Um, I'm not sure why it's called key input. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments below. But basically what that's telling Pro Tools is that this plugin is not looking at the audio on this bass track. It's going to be looking somewhere else. So the plugin's like, okay, cool, I'm looking somewhere else, now where do I look? So then what you do is you go over here where the little key icon is, and it says no key input, and you just wanna pick the input that you had selected. So mine's 6566, so I'm gonna go bus, I'm just gonna pick either one of those, should be fine. Um, so I'll do 65. And so now this bass track is going to be uh, compressed, so this compressor is gonna be triggered whenever the kick kicks in, right? <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Um, anyway, so the kick is controlling this compressor that's going to bring down the level on the bass. And you'll then, of course, want to set the compressor however you want to set it. Set the threshold value to an appropriate value based on where the kick is hitting. Um, and you'll be able to see it here as well. So, and of course, you know, you're going to set your threshold value based on where the kick is hitting. Um, and then, you know, all the other values, so attack, release, gain, everything based on how much you want to compress that bass. Um, and you just want to listen and experiment and get used to trying it and knowing how um, these things affect the sound that you hear. Cool, so that's the basic idea. I hope this helped some of you guys out there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you liked this video and if you want to see more of my videos. And if you want to support my channel more directly, I do have that Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. Like, for example, with this video, they're going to have a little checklist on how to do sidechain compression um, and maybe a little bit more info. I haven't made the handout yet, but there will be a handout to go with this video for you guys. So thank you so much for being patrons. And that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you for watching. Okay. My computer sounds like it's going to take off because this session is huge. Um, I don't know. That's my story. Actually, don't say that. I was going to film yesterday, but my bunny was sick because she just got vaccinated for this uh, bunny disease that's spreading. Um, so I was watching her all day, but she was fine. She just, you know, a little, little under the weather because of her immune system matching that response. That's my story. <laughs>